Hello, today I am super excited to welcome a real estate investor and a friend, Colette Raba. So we're going to interview her and uh, she's going to tell you how she got started in real estate investing and how you can learn from her. As a single professional, I had debt and no savings after my divorce. I always wonder how I can start investing in real estate to secure my future. I studied programs that gave me all the benefits of investing in real estate. Some claim I could start with no money, but I could not find one that gave me the practical, actionable steps I needed. As a wealth advisor, I've met people that own real estate, but weren't ahead financially. They were rich, but they weren't wealthy. Then I finally realized that there was one vital component missing that makes someone become wealthy or not. And on the show, I will reveal what I found and give you the step-by-step -step actions to start investing in real estate and increase your wealth. My name is Araceli. Let's get started. Hello, everyone. This is Araceli. And as you know, today we're going to be talking to a real estate investor. And who better to start this series than my good friend Colette. And you know also that we have a weekly call that we talk about all this stuff that is related to real estate investing and also growing your wealth. But today she is coming here to tell us a little bit about her story, why she is where she is and why she's an investor. Colette. I'm in the hot seat today. Can you introduce yourself? Tell us who you are. And please tell me a little bit about your, your childhood. How, how did you grow up? Like, I want to know what kind of things you saw money-wise. Okay? And I'll tell you why yeah. after you finish, okay? Okay. Oh, this is a... Um, I'm in the hot seat. Yeah. So, uh, thank you for having me. This is really fun. This is great. Um, and, you know, I'm a huge fan of Araceli. I just have to say that. When I first met her years and years ago, I was so impressed by her. And I was just, you know, you... you it's one of those things where you come across certain people in your life and you think, I would really like to be in this person's world. I want to know more of what she does and I want to learn about her and I think she's super intelligent and your background and how, where you, and your diversity of, of where you came from as far as uh, uh, work and um, your upbringing and stuff like that. So, so it's my pleasure really to talk to you today. Um, okay, so my name is Colette Rabba. I am a residential real estate broker in the GTA and I got my license because I really couldn't find an agent that knew what I knew about home structure, about uh, income properties. I wanted a pro forma. I wanted to know about the demographics in the area. All these things, when you're an investor, you should know. And I thought all agents know that. No, that's not. And this is one of the things that why we do our weekly call because when you are selecting a new a realtor to help you find investment properties, it's not the same set of eyes that you are when you are yeah. dealing with a realtor that is just buying a house for yourself. Thank but you. First, yeah. Tell me, tell me how you grew up. Tell me about, okay. things about money for you. Okay, so I grew up, and this is interesting because if anybody knows what my last name is, I don't, you know, really, I guess it's now online, I'm saying it out loud, but not a lot of people know. My last name is Rabba. If anybody in the GTA knows Rabba Fine Foods, this is my dad. He started this company. He has a lot of real estate. I grew up in this world of business where every dinner table conversation, every phone call relationship wise was always about something to do with the business. I, there was no, oh, what are you doing for fun this weekend? Or, hey, do you want to go in, uh, to a ball game? Like there was none of that growing up. It was all business. And this is the gold. This is the goal and the gold. <laughs> this is the goal of life is business. You know, run your own business, start your own business. Everything is everything touches money. That's your your saying, and that was really the way we we grew up. Um, I have siblings as well. I am the second uh, one, so I'm not the firstborn. But the way we grew up was like very very poor. 
I started working when I was, whatever, 12, part-time after school every day, every night. That was a must. I don't think I got a paycheck, actually, at the beginning, until I started crying and saying, oh, you know, I'm doing this and I need clothes. I don't have anything to wear. I need to... So then they said, okay, we'll start paying you. <laughs> so that happened. So you started actually working for your family, right? Yes. Yeah. So I started working in one of the stores. And then um, I grew with the company too. I worked with them for a long time through high school. Uh, when I, I went back to school for college for graphic design, uh, then I didn't work for the company. I, I got my own job at uh, a graphic design place. But anyway, to answer your whole question was, how was my family with money? It was always, we have money, but we're not spending it. There is money there if you need it, but you're not allowed to spend it. And it's still that way. My parents are still that way. Every time, I'll give you an example. Every time I buy, you know, for Christmas, I'll buy my dad a present. And it could be a big thing or it could be a small thing. He says, how much was it? Don't spend your money. That's, that's the, the underlying theme throughout my growing up and and when I got married I got married at 24 that was the philosophy that my husband and I also I I sort of made him adopt it too because I said we have goals we want to buy a house let's hit that goal and we did we actually bought our first house I believe I was we got married at 20 I got married at 24 I think we bought our first house at 25 about a year after so we lived in an apartment for a year saved every scrap everything 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 and never going out for dinner never going starbucks didn't exist right like hardly maybe we didn't we didn't kill each kill each other we didn't kill ourselves and not spend so we did have dinners out we did go on holidays but always very frugal so throughout the theme so that that was when I figured, okay, now we have, we're not struggling, we have money, what do we do with it? We need money to put away for the kids. We need money to put away for ourselves, our RSPs. That was the first thing. Then the second thing was, okay, now I would really like, one of my personal goals was to have an income property. How do I do that? For years I asked him, we bought a beautiful house that we could rent out the basement. For years I asked him, please, let's have a rental. Even if it's an Airbnb or, or a short-term rental, let's get that money in. Nobody's using the basement. Why Why wouldn't we do it? He was insistent that he, he didn't want to do that. He didn't feel comfortable having a stranger live in your own house. Even though it's a completely separate entity, you know, like there is a barrier, there's doors, there's everything that you have your own private space. He just didn't want to do that. So, fast forward all these years, husband is gone. <laughs> yeah. I don't have to ask for permission anymore. So the first thing I did was I got myself an income property in my basement. My second income property was a few years before that, and that is an Airbnb and a vacation home. So that's how I wanted to start that was comfortable for me because I wanted to enjoy myself too. So how do I meld those two things? I want to retire one day and that's the other thing. These are This was my goal. I want a property that I could possibly retire so it has to be in a nice area that I like. That's the hardest thing for, for people buying an income property to say, you're not the renter. Look at who's the person that's going to, or the people that are going to be the tenants. I said, okay, I'm the, uh, I'm number one. I have to say that about myself. Yeah. I come first, what do I want? So first thing is I want a place that I can enjoy in between guests, in between renters. So that worked out. Number two, you know, and also location, I wanted it in a nice place. So I, that was, that was easy, but it took me a long time to get there because there's, Ontario is beautiful. There's the Muskokas, there's Lake Erie, there's Lake Huron. There's, you know, Lake Ontario. So where do I want to be? It took me a long time to figure out my location, but I figured it out and I got it. And that's with anybody buying an income property, right? Is location. So, Colette, I'm going to um, go back to a, a few things that you said, right? Yes. And I really wanted you to say a little bit about your story because 
it is very, very different from mine. You know, I never had the same type of upbringing saying, oh, you have to go into business, you have to do this, right? Right. The complete opposite. I had, um, my, my dad actually was um, self-employed. He's still actually self-employed, he's still working. And the only thing that he wanted my sister and I to do is to go to university, get educated and get a good job, right? Mm. And this is... You know what? And that's the opposite. My my family said, you don't have to go to university. You don't have to go to school. We have a business. Just come on in. Come come join the business. You're part of the business. So for us, I, I know that mindset is very interesting when you're growing up to say, oh, I can just sit back and do nothing. And, you know, here's my it handed to me on a silver platter. But that's not the case. We had to work harder than everybody else because we had to set the example. But I wish my family said, go get an education. Yeah, but you know what? It, it is good and, and also not good because the mindset of business wasn't there for me for a long, long time. And it's not only until, until I went through a big life transition when I said, hold on a second, this is not working out. I got to do something different. So it took me a long time. And I'm saying this for a lot of people that they feel that they're, you know, missing the ball, that they're just not what they're supposed to be because they don't have the upbringing. I didn't have the same upbringing that you did. And I wish somebody would tell me and explain more about how to go into business, how to uh, seek that as soon oh, as yeah. we were able to. You know, I like the part of the education, but it is not everything. You need to have right. other things. So, so what happened when you were in your 20s and you went to university or you went to school, I opened my first business at 24. There you go. I opened my own business and I got married a few months after that and it all happened and it was like, oh my God, I have to be a grown up at 24. It was really difficult. Those were very, very difficult times and I remember uh, you know, talking to my husband and, and going through those things and saying like, we're kids. When I look at my, my daughter's 23 and I look at her and I go, if she were to tell me that she's going to get married next year, I would have freaked out. I would have never, I would never allow it. But obviously it's not my, my place, but it's her own decision. But it's this kind of strange things that yes, of course it's different times. Yes, it's a much bigger world. Yes, you can make a hundred thousand or, or a million playing video games these days. Like it's a different world and I get that. But when you say school versus working, Ultimately, I think that when you're a younger person, to give any advice here, if that's the thing, is whatever you decide to do, squirrel away your money. That's the best advice. If you're not ready to spend it, if you don't know what you want to do, if you don't know anything about investments, just save, 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 and talk to the right people. And how do you know who's the right person? That's the question. That's right. So what I tell my clients or people that I talk to that they want to become clients, I said, listen, you got to understand that this is a long-term relationship when they engage me as an advisor, that it's not just a, a quick sale and I don't see you ever again. Uh, so those things, you got to make sure that you really resonate with the other person, with the advisor, that it's going to... Uh, be looking after what you need. It's not about me. It's not about what I want because I'm in a totally different space, right? Right, but right. I think that the combination, what I wanted to get at with your story, Colette, is that it doesn't matter where you're coming from. If you think, because we all go through transitions, big or small, right? But they always touch money. For right. the better or for the worse. In most cases, would be for the worse because normally the big transition that a lot of people go through is divorce or some kind of hardship. Maybe they lose your job or something like that. It's, well, yeah. All of those things happen. But the most important thing is that if you are really looking to grow your wealth, the real estate investing is the best way to go. I agree. And I also want to say that even though people say, oh, it's not the same, you know, you when you were houses were $300,000, something like that, the, the thing is, it's still possible. There are ways to do it. You don't have to have a million dollars in your bank account to invest in real estate. There are small things you can do and you can really start them by doing something very, very easy like renting a room out or renting an apartment, uh, you know, a, a part of your house out. 
There are ways to do it very, very small. And just to see what kind, if you don't know who, what kind of landlord you, you are or what kind of investment you want to invest in, there are people out there like you and I, we've done it. We're not, you know, multimillionaire yet. Yeah, that's right. We're, we're, com I want to say we're like the common people that we have bills to pay. We have our children to, to, you know, give them money or to think, okay, this is part of my goal is to have this legacy for my kids. Uh, you know, we have car payments, we have utilities. It's not like we have somebody handing us money. And that was the weird thing. Even though my family has money, it's not something that they say, oh, you need money? Yeah, here you go, here you go, here you go. I am a working realtor, full-time realtor, full-time mom. I have my bills. I'm single now. I have to pay everything on my own. It, it can be scary at times. Sure. But knowing and then talking to you, of course, and saying, how do I do this? And Araceli says, okay, here you go. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll fill in the blanks for you and really help me decide, okay, can I even do this? So this is the thing that we don't know everything, but we're here to help you where, where we can. Yeah, but the, I think the most important thing is that we took action. We did something. And mindset. I Exactly. The mindset is super important. The next thing is also you got to start somewhere. Whatever ability you can, start yeah. doing that. And investing yourself by, you know, reading books, taking courses, all of that kind of stuff. So you're educated enough to take the step. Watching our YouTube videos. Yeah, of course. And we I give a lot of content. There's a lot of good content there. So. And the other thing too is really don't fret about your age. If you're in your 50s, if you're in your 60s and you say, I would really, this is a life goal of mine to do this. You know how many people say to me, oh, I would love to own a cottage. I would love to, I go, really? Do you really want it? Because it's a lot of work. There's a lot of this, there's a lot of that. And they're like, oh my gosh, we had no idea. We thought you just sit back and like, oh, no. you know, like my painting, like I just sit there and I, and, and I look at the sunset. It's a, it's a, it's a job. It is my second job. So when you have, and then once you have that one, you get a taste of it and you want another one and another one and another one. Yeah. And you get into that lifestyle where I don't have to work anymore. I can rely on the income coming in from these properties. And that's my full time job. There are many people doing that and you still have that possibility. I never say it's not possible absolutely it's possible absolutely Colette I do appreciate it so much you sharing your story because this will help other women especially to say yeah it is possible you know you don't have to be a super millionaire or anything like that to get started yeah. but you gotta get started somewhere so and you know what yeah even like this is the one of my goals too is that Araceli because she invests in the US one of my goals is to actually have an investment with her. And that's the last thing I want to say. If you are scared to do it yourself, find a partner and do it with a partner. But make sure you get all the legalities figured out before you decide on who your partner is. And I can't wait for the border to open so we can get started because I would love to have a, a property with you, Colette, and uh, that would be amazing. So. Awesome. I got the muscle yeah. too, so we can do some demolition. Demolition is my thing. So. <laughs> yeah, me too. Awesome. If you love demolition, you got a clear road ahead of you. You're yeah, good. For sure. Well, thank you so much, Colin, for being here. And Thanks for having me. I hope the listeners took some uh, stuff from you and they decide to move forward and get started in real estate investing. You know what? The easiest thing is just to have a conversation. That's the first thing. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Okay. We'll talk to you later, Colette. Bye. Bye. Thank you for being here on the show. Please remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get notified when there are more shows available. And if you would like to have more information on how to start investing in real estate, please visit my website at www.arisalihernandez.com. Thank you.